Good News Flower Hour, people. I'm your host, Dave Easy. This week, we take a hard look at the man described by many as public enemy number one of health care reform. While recent polls show an overwhelming majority of Americans favor health care reform that includes a so-called public option that will provide coverage for the estimated 45 million Americans currently with no health insurance, one very rich man is doing everything in his power to make sure this does not happen. He's going so far as to spend $5 million of his own money to bankroll TV ads designed to scare the American public with visions of a socialized medicine hell where the right to choose is forcibly surrendered to Big Brother, where government bureaucrats dictate diagnosis and treatment to doctors, and pain-riddled patients wait for months or years for critical care. This rich man's name is Richard Scott, a former hospital chain executive, longtime Republican donor, and one of the many crony capitalist predators that George W. Bush calls friend. Hi, I'm Rick Scott. Thanks for visiting us at Conservatives for Patients' Rights. Back in March, Scott founded the misleadingly named Conservatives for Patients' Rights which is really little more than a heavily capitalized AstroTurf website masquerading as a power to the people grassroots movement that crusades against the evils of government-run healthcare. According to Politico, he has raised more than $20 million for an ad campaign which is being coordinated by CRC Public Relations, the group that masterminded the so-called Swift Boat Veterans for Truth attacks against 2004 Democratic presidential candidate John F. Kerry. Give me that old-fashioned morphine Give me that old-fashioned morphine That's good enough for me Perhaps a more accurate name for Scott's organization would be Conservatives for Capitalist Fat Cat's Rights to Exploit the Sick and Infirmed for Fun and for Profit. You see, Scott is the founder of Solantic, a Florida-based chain of so-called urgent care clinics whose target market is the 45 million uninsured Americans with no access to health care. That target market would dry up if health care reform goes through with a public option that would provide health insurance coverage for those 45 million Americans that currently go without. That's 45 million potential customers that would disappear overnight with the stroke of President Obama's pen. None of this is mentioned on the Conservatives for Patients' Rights website. This is our main care facility. Temperature here is 94.7 degrees Fahrenheit, humidity 82%. This stability reduces patient heat loss and caloric requirements. There's a low level ultraviolet bacteriostatic flux, and to prevent bed sores, patients are suspended by wires through long bones. It is indicative of just how unpopular opposition to health care reform is that Scott would emerge as the obstructionist spokesman because he is a very damaged messenger. Previously, Scott was president of healthcare giant Columbia HCA, which at the time was the world's largest health care provider with more than 340 hospitals, 130 surgery centers, with annual revenues in excess of $23 billion. One of Columbia HCA's favorite techniques for gaming the healthcare market was buying up competing hospitals and closing them down. In 1997, Scott was forced out by the board of directors in the wake of a seven-year federal fraud investigation that concluded with the company pleading guilty to 14 felony counts of criminal misconduct, including defrauding Medicare and Medicaid out of millions of dollars worth of false claims and paying kickbacks to physicians that guided patients to the hospitals that it owned. All told, Columbia HCA paid out more than $1.7 billion in fines and civil settlements. Although he was president, Scott claimed he had no knowledge of his company's fraudulent practices and for his trouble was awarded a $10 million golden parachute and $300 million worth of stock options. Once again, none of this is mentioned on the Conservatives for Patients' Rights website. There we are. What's the cost? For each patient, about $60 a day, but 
We have the capacity to store a thousand patients, and then of course the cost will go down. We expect to maintain patients for about five dollars a day, less than it costs to hire a babysitter for a few hours. People like Scott and the lobbyists of K Street who are paid seven-figure salaries to pull the puppet strings of Congress and protect the massive profit margins of ginormous healthcare conglomerates are essentially advocating for the status quo because there is money to be made. A lot of money. This year, Americans will spend nearly three trillion dollars on health care. Three trillion. That's four times the amount we spend on national defense. According to a 2008 report by Health Matrix, 1.5 million Americans lose their homes every year to foreclosure because of medical debts. A recent survey conducted in Iowa revealed that 44% of respondents have to cut back on food and heating expenses to cope with rising health insurance costs. A recent report indicates that married couples entering retirement will require a quarter of a million dollars to cover their health care costs by the end of their lives. And what do we get for that three trillion dollars we spend every year? Consider this. In the year 2000, the World Health Organization ranked the United States healthcare system 37th in overall performance and 72nd by overall level of health among 191 member nations included in the study. The CIA World Factbook ranks the United States 41st in the world for lowest infant mortality rate and 46th for highest total life expectancy. According to the Institute of Medicine, 100,000 Americans die annually from medical errors, more than double the number of Americans who die annually in car crashes. People like Rick Scott say that we should stay the course, that America can't afford to have government-run health care. But it would seem to us here at the Good News Flower Hour that Americans can no longer afford not to have government-run health care. Well, we know where we're going, but we don't know where we've been. And we know what we're knowing, but we can't say. What we've seen and we're not little children. Their attacks on me, besides being flat out wrong, show they are desperate. Even the articles they sent around to document their attacks explicitly state that I was never charged with any wrongdoing.